Hey everyone, this is Christian. I Again, if you don't know me, I am the Youth and Family Ministries Director here at Trinity. Uh, for today's Trinity Talk Devotion, I wanted to explore this concept of hope in the midst of fear. So I'm going to draw your attention to Hebrews chapter 11 for this piece. Now, we're not going to read the whole chapter because we don't have time for all that, but the chapter 11 in Hebrews is often called the, the uh, Hall of Faith, or the Hall of Fame, of the key figures in the Old Testament who are commended for their great faith. So I just want to draw us to a couple key places in there as we kind of build this idea of hope out of this passage. So Hebrews chapter 11 verses 1 through 2 says, Now faith is confidence in what we hope for and assurance about what we do not see. This is what the agents were commended for. Later on, verses 13 through 16, it says, All these people were still living by faith when they died. That being the prophets and the key figures in the Old Testament. They did not receive the things promised. They only saw them and welcomed them from a distance, admitting that they were foreigners and strangers on earth. People who say such things should, they are looking for a country of their own. If they had been thinking of the country they had left, they would have had opportunity to return. Instead, they were longing for a better country, a heavenly one. Therefore, God is not ashamed to be called their God, for he has prepared a city for them. And then finally, in the chapter, verses 39 through 40, these were all commended for their faith. Yet none of them received what had been promised, since God had planned something better for us so that only together with us would they be made perfect. So if you've read uh, my devotion in the church devotions that we're doing for Lent, I go through this idea of biblical lament. And lament just being recognizing that things aren't as they should be and walking that process of grief and sorrow and frustration, which we all will walk through at some point in our lives. But we often find ourselves staying in this phase of lament where we just want to bemoan what's wrong and complain about what's wrong and just be stuck there. But biblical lament is where we can kind of engage with the frustrations that we feel and then lead us into hope and reconciliation because much of the Old Testament is people lamenting about what's wrong and God saying, I got this, don't worry. So I'm particularly fond of this quote I found from theologian Jürgen Moltmann, who witnessed the horrors of Nazi Germany, lamented the death of his homeland as it fell to the Nazis, and hoped for restoration of the good. So his quote reads, Genuine hope is not blind optimism. It is hope with open eyes, which sees the suffering yet believes in the future. Paul kind of hits this same quote in Romans 8, particularly in verses 18 through 25. He talks about the suffering of the present age. And he doesn't shy away from acknowledging that things aren't okay. In his time, Rome is under the thumb of cruel and ineffective autocrats, Nero, Caligula, those guys. The Roman peace is long gone. The economy is poor, and there's great divisions in society along ethnic and uh, social barriers and wealth barriers and financial barriers. And so, too, we can say things today aren't great. Uh, So far in 2020, we've narrowly avoided a new conflict in the Middle East. There were massive wildfires in Australia. We have toxic political partisanship in the midst of an election year. And somehow that has seeped into our faith communities and started to affect us. And then there's threats of pandemic on the horizon. So yeah, things aren't okay. Yet Paul calls these the birthing pains and not the death pains. So there's something good to come. So we're Christians is that we hope. We recognize pain and suffering the hurt and we can lament it and we hope. So Pastor Jay talked about on Sunday that about living with perspective and a, a Christian perspective. And our perspective is ultimately rooted in the faith and hope of Jesus Christ. So like the Hebrews Hall of Faith, we hope for things that are yet unseen. We know the promises that God has given us, the promises that Christ has given us, and we hope for things that are still unseen. We hope for walls to come crashing down between us, that we form a cohesive and united community around our identity in Christ. We long for peace and reconciliation of all people to God. It's it's this belief and hope that when we say Jesus died for all, we mean it, and we seek to guide everyone to the redemption that is in Christ, regardless of what their past transgressions were. And we, like many in the Old Testament, may never see the fruits of this labor. Our faith compels us to act. Prophet Amos talks about pursuing love and justice so that way it can roll down like a waterfall. So for us, we have all seen pieces and tastes of the kingdom of God. And that's what we long for. And that's what our hope is in. So in people who can say it more articulately than me, I want to draw your attention to my favorite band, Switchfoot. So if you haven't heard of them, I would say check it out after this. You'll have a good time while you're at work or whatever you're doing right now. Uh, One of their songs is called Hope is the Anthem, and this uh, chorus is where I think there's good stuff to be pulled from. My heartbeat, my oxygen, my banner, my home, my future, my song, your hope is the anthem of my soul. So I ask that you join me and the community of believers in letting this hope, this eternal perspective, be what drives us, not fear and not sorrow. Everyone else acts out of fear. We need to act out of hope. So let us have an anthem of hope 
and not an anthem of fear. Thanks, guys.